千察全地，长观万有，目睹着人的一言一行、一举一,一动。他有计划，有步骤的进行着他的经营，悄无声息也未尽惊天动地。而他的脚步却一步一步，一步一步。人类以迅雷不及掩耳之势，在宇宙间展开了他的审判台，展开了他的审判台。他的宝座也随即将宰掉，将宰掉。我们中间，将宰了我们中间。是何等威严的场面，那是何等庄严肃穆的景象，那令犹如鸽子，犹如怒吼的狮子，来在我们众人中间。他是智慧，他是公义威严，他是智慧。权柄满载着慈爱怜悯，悄悄地降临在我们中间，降临在我们中间。他是智慧，是智慧，公义威严，公义威严。他是智慧，是公义威严，带着权柄满载着慈爱怜悯，悄悄地。在我们中间，降临在我们中间。<laughs> That song is wonderful. God's work really is so nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, singing this hymn of God's words reminds me of when I worshipped the Lord Jesus in the religious community. The pastor and elders always said to us that God will judge us in the last days. From a giant desk up in the sky, that the Lord Jesus will be on a great white throne where He'll judge people based on what we've done, rewarding the good and punishing the wicked. I always believed that. It wasn't until I read Almighty God's words and investigated His work of the last days that I really woke up, and saw that was all human notions and imaginings. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. In fact. God has already come amongst mankind to express truths for His last day's judgment and the judgment before Christ's seat has begun. Yes. 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 I'll go ahead and share my experience. Please, please, please do. Please do. It was 2015, and I'd been a believer for over 20 years. In October, some of my work colleagues got me to start using Facebook to find friends and chat. Whenever I had time, I'd look at the posts made by brothers and sisters, and I would like and share everything I saw that appealed to me. One day in February of 2016, I was browsing on the internet on Facebook as usual, when I noticed a group discussing God's judgment of the last days. Everyone had something different to say. Someone said that they didn't know what the judgment was, so they didn't dare speak casually, and that we couldn't speculate on God's future actions. Another person then put forward Psalm seventy-five, verse two: "When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly." They said that means God has a record of what everyone has done in their life. 
And when the Lord Jesus judges people in the last days, he will show it to everyone, like a movie. So we should behave well, be upright, never do evil, and follow God's words, so that God will not send us to hell. And another person said, based on what's in Revelation, when God judges us in the last days, he will do it from a great white throne up in the sky, where the Lord Jesus will set up a big desk, sit at it, and open a big book containing each person's life, then judge them one by one according to what they've done. Those who've done good will be taken into God's kingdom, while those who have done evil will be sent to hell. After reading these posts, I started mentally outlining all those ideas of the Lord Jesus judging people in the last days. The Lord Jesus will sit on a great white throne in the sky, with people kneeling before him, waiting to be judged. The Lord Jesus will determine if people are going to heaven or hell based on how much good and how much evil they have done. I believed in the Lord for over 20 long years. I followed him and spread the gospel enthusiastically, and had worked hard to live by his teachings. I figured he'd definitely see my sincerity and take me into his kingdom. I kept thinking about it, and it occurred to me that I could search for judgment online and see what results came up. As I did my research, I came across this headline. God's chastisement and judgment is the light of man's salvation. And immediately, this caught my attention. I clicked on the link, excited to see what was there. It turned out to be a very lovely and thought-provoking hymn. 人的一生要想得着结晶心情达到变化活出一个有意义的人生尽到受造之物第一本分得以接受神的心发生牌让神的管教极大不离开是你脱离撒旦的白不脱离撒旦的全是活在神的光中你得知道神的心发生盘就是光就是拯救人的光就是人最好的祝福是最大的恩典最好的报受阿们 <音> The lyrics truly piqued my curiosity and held my attention. They said that God's chastisement and judgment are the light of man's salvation, that they're the best protection and great grace for us. I wondered what that meant. It also said that to be cleansed and live a meaningful life, we have to accept God's judgment and chastisement. And so, pondering this brought up, some new questions for me to think about. Doesn't judgment just determine our outcome? How could it be the light of salvation? I had never heard anything like that before. That kind of judgment was different from what I'd thought of as judgment. But I had a vague sense it wasn't as simple as I had previously thought. Yes. yes. I looked for the hymn's source and saw that it was from the Church of Almighty God. I went to their website immediately it had an interesting design and a huge array of wonderful content to see. I saw all sorts of books, uh, hymns, praising God, videos, and gospel movies, as well as written testimonies. I went to the book section first, where I saw some titles like Judgment Begins with the House of God, Testimonies of Experiences Before the Judgment Seat of Christ. They mentioned judgment. In Testimonies of Experiences Before the Judgment Seat of Christ, there were articles about the judgment, such as Transformation Through Judgment and Judgment is the Light. I then went on to read a few articles, and they were all about how Christians experienced the judgment of God's words and how their views on faith and corrupt dispositions were changed. Reading this made me curious, and I wondered, is it possible that judgment isn't condemnation, but salvation? What does God's chastisement and judgment 
is the light of man's salvation mean? It looked like these books about judgment would really be helpful. And I wanted to read them carefully. Yes, it's good to get clarity. <laughs> but it was time to go to work, so I had to turn off my computer and leave. But the whole day, I couldn't stop thinking about the Church of Almighty God's website. Especially, God's chastisement and judgment is the light of man's salvation. But I simply could not figure out what the word judgment really meant there. When I got home that evening, I went straight back to that site and searched for judgment. And then I read, Christ does the work of judgment with the truth. There was a passage in it that really moved me. I'll read it now. Sure. 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 In the judgment, beginning at God's house said in times past, the judgment of these words refers to the judgment that God today passes on those who come before his throne in the last days. There are perhaps those who believe in such supernatural imaginings as that when the last days have arrived, God will erect a big table in the heavens upon which a white tablecloth will be spread. And then, sitting upon a great throne with all men kneeling on the ground, he will reveal the sins of each man and thereby determine whether they are to ascend to heaven or be sent down to the lake of fire and brimstone. No matter what man imagines, it cannot alter the substance of God's work. The imaginings of man are nothing but the constructs of man's thoughts. They come from the brain of man summed up and pieced together from what man has seen and heard. Therefore, I say, however brilliant the images conceived, they are but depictions and are incapable of substituting the plan of God's work. Man, after all, has been corrupted by Satan. So how could he fathom the thoughts of God? Man conceives God's work of judgment as something fantastic, he believes that, since it is God himself who does the work of judgment, then this work must be of the most tremendous scale and incomprehensible to mortals, and must resound throughout the heavens and shake the earth. If not, how could it be the work of judgment by God? He believes that, as this is the work of judgment, then God must be particularly imposing and majestic as he carries out this work. And those being judged must be howling with tears and on their knees begging for mercy. Such scenes would surely be spectacular and deeply affecting. Everyone imagines God's work of judgment to be utterly miraculous. Do you know, however, that at the time when God has long since begun his work of judgment among man, you remain nestled in lethargic slumber? that at the time when you think God's work of judgment has formally begun, God will have already made heaven and earth anew? At that time, perhaps you will have only just come to understand the meaning of life. But God's merciless work of punishment shall bring you still deep in sleep into hell. Only then will you suddenly realize that God's work of judgment has already concluded. Amen. 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 That's amazing. Reading this left me feeling astounded. My exact, deeply held thoughts and perspectives on God's judgment of the last days were so clearly revealed. Was my belief that God would perform judgment in the sky really just supernatural thinking? It also said that God's judgment work of the last days had already begun and was about to end. And it warned people to seek God's appearance right away. I wondered, could this be God's voice? And that thought alone really left me all aflutter. And I wanted to figure it out right away. Yeah, yeah. of course. And so I sent a message through the Church of Almighty God's website using their chat feature and told them I was interested in God's judgment of the last days. I was surprised to receive a response really quickly. And Sister Liu and Sister Lee with the church joined the chat to speak to me. Thanks, Thanks God. 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 After some quick introductions, I shared my confusion with them. I said, 
Based on the book of Revelation, God will be in the sky on a great white throne to carry out his judgment. However, when I read Christ does the work of judgment with the truth, it said, that's just a human notion and that God's judgment work of the last days has begun. What exactly does all of this mean? Sister Liu took the time and responded with this fellowship. What it says in Revelation about John seeing a great white throne in the sky on Patmos Island where he resided was just a vision, a prophecy about God's judgment in the last days, that's all. It's not something that will really happen. That is, no one can know or determine exactly how God will do his judgment work until he has completed his actual judgment work. We can only know once the prophecy has been fulfilled. Yes. yes. She also said there are many prophecies in the Bible about the judgment work. Like in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the middle of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. There is also John chapter 9, verse 39. For judgment I come to this world, that they which see not might see. She explained the verses saying, Having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth, for judgment I come to this world, shows that God will come to earth so he can do his judgment work here in the last days. That's, That's right. right. She also mentioned John chapter 5, verse 22. The Lord Jesus said, For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. And then verse 27, And has given him authority to execute judgment, for he is the Son of Man. As well as mm, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. She said, these verses say that judgment will be done by the Son. The Son of Man, or the Son, means he's born of man and has normal humanity. The Spirit of God wouldn't be called the Son of Man. So this is adequate proof that God does the judgment work of the last days in the flesh as the Son of Man. And also, it's written that judgment begins with the house of God. That is to say, God's judgment work of the last days starts with believers of God themselves. Yes. yes. Amen. I was startled at this point, and I thought, I've been a believer for years, and I've read all these Bible verses that she's referencing before. So why haven't I ever noticed that God will incarnate as the Son of Man to do his judgment work right here among us on earth? Yeah. yeah. I just went by John's vision on Patmos Island, imagining that's how God would perform his judgment while overlooking the other verses about the judgment. I've had such a limited understanding. As I looked through these verses, I pondered Sister Liu's fellowship. Just then, I heard Sister Li continue the fellowship. Almighty God does the work of judgment in the last days, to purify and save mankind, while also revealing everyone's outcomes and sorting us according to our kind. Right? Right. This is the judgment before the great white throne in the last days, and this completely fulfills those biblical prophecies. Yes. 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 She said, God incarnate expresses the truth and does the judgment work in the last days, mainly to make a group of overcomers before the disasters. Those who truly long for God's appearance from every denomination read Almighty God's words, see that they're the truth, that they are God's voice, and turn toward Almighty God. Mm. They are the wise virgins who are taken up before God's throne, where they're judged and cleansed through God's words. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 When a group of overcomers is made by God, God will begin to rain down great disasters, reward good and punish evil, and utterly destroy the wicked ones who madly resist God. That's when God's judgment work of the last days will fully come to a close. Amen. 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 Then she added, disasters are getting worse and worse. Right. right. 
and the four blood moons have appeared. There have been locusts and floods, droughts, famines, and plagues. So many disasters. Yes. Yes, yes. The great disasters are very close. When they finally come to pass, all who have done evil and been enemies of God, and all those who belong to Satan, will be destroyed. Those who've accepted the judgment of God's words and thus have been cleansed will be protected and survive the disasters and finally be taken into the kingdom of God. Isn't that precisely the last day's judgment before the great white throne? Amen. Yes. Listening to her fellowship was enlightening for me. I realize that Almighty God expressing the truth to do the judgment work is the last day's judgment of the great white throne. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But my confusion wasn't entirely resolved. They had said that God expresses the truth and does the judgment work in the last days to cleanse and save mankind. But I thought to myself, the Lord has already forgiven our sins and no longer sees us as sinful. Why would God still need to cleanse and save mankind with the work of judgment in the last days? Yeah, that's what we all thought in our belief in the Lord. Yes. So then what happened? I brought up that same question with the sisters who read two more passages of Almighty God's words. Mm -hmm. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition, completely saving human beings from the influence of Satan itself. Not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man, but it also required God to do even greater work, to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. And so, now that man has been forgiven of his sins, God has returned to the flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. This work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and they shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. I'll read the next passage. Okay. You only know that Jesus shall descend in the last days, but how will he descend? A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed, and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus, and you don't count as a sinner due to God's salvation. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish, and mean. Yet you still wish to descend. With Jesus, you should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but you have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. You, a sinner, who has just been redeemed, are therefore incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Amen. 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 Thanks be Amen. to God. After reading this, Sister Lee continued her fellowship. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus did the work of redemption which was only to forgive all mankind's sins. He didn't resolve our corrupt dispositions. Our sins are forgiven and we're saved and justified by our faith in the Lord, which means we're not condemned and cursed by the law. But our satanic nature of sinning and resisting God remains buried deep within us. Our sinful nature has not yet been uprooted. 
That's why we are still bound by our sinful nature and we keep sinning and lying. Some people who have some caliber and certain strengths become arrogant and unyielding. And just because they can do a little work, they show off, fight for name and status, and engage in intrigue. Mm, That's right. It looks like they work hard and make sacrifices, and they say it's to love and satisfy God. But in fact, it's to be blessed and to gain a crown. In the face of adversity or difficult trials, they argue with God and become disgruntled, or even say God is unrighteous, and they deny and betray him. How could someone like this, who can't escape their sin, who always opposes and judges God, ever be worthy of God's kingdom? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Lord is holy, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. 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 That's why the Lord Jesus promised he'd come again. Almighty God's come in the last days, building on the foundation of the Lord Jesus' redemption. He expresses truths and does judgment work of the last days to cleanse and save man once and for all so we can be freed from all our sins and our corrupt dispositions and be fully saved by God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Her explanation really did sound right to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Even though our sins are forgiven through our faith, our sinful nature hasn't been resolved. So, so true. true. I thought about the state of affairs in our church The pastor and elders only preached on biblical doctrine and services without providing any sustenance for life. They were greedy for money and vied for power. They even formed factions and judged and undermined each other. A lot of churches are like that. Brothers and sisters felt weak and their faith and love were fading. Lots of people pursued worldly trends and were greedy for pleasures of the flesh. True. 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 They couldn't extricate themselves from sin. Mm -hmm. I also thought about how I couldn't stop myself from lying and sinning. I couldn't put the Lord's words into practice and lived in a state of sinning and confessing. How could I get into God's kingdom by doing that? True. True. We really do need God to come again and do the work to judge and cleanse us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I eagerly asked the sisters, how does God cleanse and save people in the last days through his judgment? Uh They read me another passage of Almighty God's words. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words are comprised of a great variety of truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God, and so on. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, the words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. In his work of judgment, God does not clarify man's nature with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth of which man is utterly bereft. Only such methods can be called judgment. Such judgment is all that can subdue man, convince them to submit to God, and get them to truly know God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the the true true face of God God. and And the the truth truth about about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God as as well as the purpose of God's work and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of God's judgment. For the substance of judgment work 
is to open up the truth, way, and life of God to all people who are believers in Him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. If you do not regard these truths as important, if you think of nothing but how to avoid them, or how to find a new way out that does not involve them, then I say you are a grievous sinner. If you have faith in God yet seek not the truth or the will of God, nor the love of the way that brings you closer to God, then I say you are trying to evade judgment, and that you are the puppet and a traitor who flees from the great white throne. God will not spare any of the rebellious people who escape from under his own eyes. Such men shall receive even more severe punishment. Those who come before God to be judged and have moreover been purified by God shall forever live in the kingdom of God. Of course, this is something that belongs to the future. Amen. 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 I was deeply moved by these words. Sister Lee went on with her fellowship. Almighty God uses words to do the work of judgment in the last days, to fully cleanse and save mankind. He expresses all the truths corrupt humanity needs to understand and enter into, to be fully saved and cleansed. Mm. Yeah. 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 Almighty God not only exposes the essence and truth of all humanity's corruption, but also the root of all darkness and evil in the world. Not only do his words point people onto the path of salvation, but they openly reveal God's will and requirements for all of mankind. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Not only do they reveal the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan, but they tell people about the outcomes and destinations that await them. Almighty God's words very thoroughly expose the essence of man's deep corruption. So we can't help but be convinced. Amen. 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 She also said, The more we experience the judgment of God's words, the more we see how deeply all humanity has been corrupted by Satan. When we fully see and realize our own satanic dispositions and the truth of our corruption, we see how utterly holy and righteous God is. Then we develop reverence and develop love for God in our hearts. That's That's right. right. And really see how corrupt and lacking in humanity we are. We see we're not worthy of God. Then we start to hate ourselves and don't want to live by our satanic dispositions. We submit to God's judgment willingly, truly repent and change. Amen. Amen. After that, Sister Lee asked me, if it weren't for God's judgment and revelation, then could our satanic nature be resolved just by praying, confessing, and trying to control ourselves? Could we escape the shackles of sin? No. There's no no way. We cannot escape sin. So how can we truly repent and be worthy of entering God's kingdom? That's why God's judgment and chastisement are the light of our salvation. Amen. 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 Those who don't want to accept the judgment of God's words will succumb to the great disasters when they arrive, weeping and gnashing their teeth. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Judgment and chastisement really are our salvation. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful to God. By reading Almighty God's words, and after a few days of fellowship, I knew within my heart just how essential Almighty God's judgment of the last days is to cleanse and save mankind. That's right. I had not experienced the judgment of God's words at that point. But through the Sisters' Fellowship and the testimonies from others, I saw that Almighty God's judgment work really can change and cleanse people of their sins. And it's just what a corrupt mankind needs. Amen. Amen. Before this fellowship, I always used to think that in the last days, God would perform judgment in the sky from an imposing great white throne, and believers would be taken up to meet with the Lord himself. Now that just seems utterly fanciful. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Now I have realized that God becomes flesh in the last days to do the work of judgment on earth with words, cleansing and saving all true believers of God. 
Only then will he use disasters to destroy all who oppose him. God's work of judgment is so practical. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've read a lot of Almighty God's words after that. And I've read a lot of mysteries and truths revealed in them. Like the ages of law, grace, and kingdom, inside stories of these three stages of work and what they achieve. How Satan corrupts mankind. How God saves and purifies us with his work of judgment and what everyone's destination and outcome will be, how God's kingdom is realized on earth, and more. It's just so eye-opening and fulfilling. Yeah, yes. it is. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Now I've experienced what Almighty God said, the substance of judgment work is to open up the truth, way, and life of God to all people who are believers in Him. These are very practical words. Amen. 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 I've heard God's voice in the words uttered by Almighty God and have come before God's throne. Amen. Amen. This is God elevating me and showing me kindness. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. God.